look at that. We're recording. Welcome oh, back, wow. Brandon. Hey, I was going, man. I haven't. I was going to ask you while we're on camera, but now that we're recording, we're like off record, but I can't get into the Ultimate Fighter at all. I, I, just, I try, I fall asleep. I think the la on the last episode, we. We didn't mention it. We forgot to talk about it, but we talked yeah. about it a little bit after we stopped recording, right? Yeah. And uh, I still haven't watched anything at all. I haven't watched the first episode, nothing. But I haven't yeah. been hearing good things. I watched the first two. The first one I watched, like, fuck, yeah, here we go, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I was like, no. And basically, you saw all of the good parts in the hype leading up to it. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? That's like when you see a movie and you see the trailers are pretty much like kill, <laughs> killing it for you. Yeah. So you're, it's just like, okay. And then it's also one of those things where it's the dilemma of like in the pay-per-views when someone gets knocked the fuck out all quick mm -hmm. and they got to like shoot to Anthony Smith and the <laughs> fucking stumbling, <laughs> slurring through some <laughs> bullshit on Twitter, reading Theo Vaughn's tweets and shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, so but they have to do that for a whole fucking episode. And then it's like this uh, special interest story. And then the dude gets smoked in like 15 seconds. And you're just like, what I mean, what the fuck is this? And then Connor's pissed in like a $30,000 suit. And it's like, okay, well, whatever. And dude, uh, what is with always wearing the suits too? Like, yeah. dude, you're in a gym setting. You're literally ringside. You're coaching people. Like, does he at least wear like workout like type gear when he's actually coaching the guys or is he still no he's full? he's no he's working out okay and it um because i see i see when the, the fights are happening in these coaching ringside like at that point oh yeah no he's still in a yeah, suit he's in there he's in there and uh it's pretty funny though because it's the newcomer or i guess because he's going up against the vets right right so he he kind of like you can tell he's it's like when i when I'm playing with my son and like we're playing T-ball and he fu his swing sucks. His swing <laughs> fucking sucks. He throws all limp wristed. And I'm like, Hey, good job, pop. Way to go. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? It's like that same thing. And Connor, cause Connor will like act out a, like a one, two, one, one, or, you know, just something like, you know, real. Right. And this guy's, he was doing it with this grappler dude. who's like a primarily grappler. And you can just tell you just like, <laughs> what the fuck? It's just like very fake, but like he's like the camera's right in his face. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like early on. I'm sure later on. But yeah. You uh you froze on me for just a moment there. Uh the last thing okay. I caught was I'm sure later on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'm sure later on he's. That's when you froze on me. But that, yeah, I'm sure later on as the season progresses, he's gonna get frustrated as fuck. Oh. He's like, cause and then he's for sure. It's like, what do they say um, about like, oh, if it ain't snowing, he ain't going. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so like, you could tell the boys off that sniff, dude. <laughs> he's yeah. He's like. Ah, like that video of Oscar De La Hoya and Ryan Garcia. He's yeah. just like a lot of like, mm, ah, like a lot of like long, long throat clears, dude. Oh man, you could tell the UFC is just like really like walking on eggshells with him and just trying to appease him at every turn because yeah, it. I think it's very evident, man. You're knocking out, knocking out fucking basketball mascots and shit. Like, how hard is the assignment? Uh, let me yeah, know. But yeah, that was weird as hell. Yeah, let me know yeah. if I'm frozen to you. Am I frozen to you right now? I don't know. Yeah, you, you're like going off and on. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I'm going to... Okay. Back. I just check some audio levels really quick. But uh, yeah, Connor <laughs> pretty clearly yacked yeah. out of his mind on the Ultimate have Fighter. You, <laughs> speaking of that, has Mike... Or have I ever told you the story? I, I don't know if Mike ever told you the story, but like... When we were younger, I think I alluded to it, but we were younger, right? We we're having like a party at like a mutual friend between Mike and I. Mm -hmm. And um, there was like, I think Mike and I were both in relationships at the time. So there were some ho festivities going on at this party we were at. And like, we we're both being good, loyal boys to our, to our baby dolls at the time. Uh -huh. And uh, so 
but I kept going to the kitchen counter for a couple things and I would come back and talk with them. You know what I mean? Go check, and, see if they had yeah. baking soda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just to make sure. Cause nothing's worse than, you know, no, no, uh, you want to eat no, the right type of flour in the cookies. Uh -huh. And, um, he, he, uh, I don't know what, and then I had this courage, right. And then I had brought, um, my Xbox and I was fucking all happy cause they had, um, Marvel versus Capcom on that, and I was like, I'm gonna whoop this little fool's ass, and he beat the <laughs> fucking shit out of me for like hours, and then I was just like, oh god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a game I had played since like fifth grade, sixth grade, like all the all of them, one, two, and three. I just I was like good on I or at least I thought I was like good on it. And it was, I was like, dude, I didn't even know these motherfuckers could do that shit. He like, had, <laughs> he, like do, they're like taking off their, they're like changing costumes like mid fucking combo and shit. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, fucking dude. Crazy. Mike, he he mentioned a little bit. Uh, he mentioned it a bit on our recent uh, episode yeah. of the WMMA fight plug uh, about his. Uh, what do they even call it? Um, competitive pro e -game gaming or whatever fight game. I forget what the acronym is, but yeah, he's he's really into the whole they used uh, to have fight game on, world. Um, yeah, they used to have them on um, like yes. ESPN. You could yeah. like watch dudes do it on ESPN. They're athletes, Brandon. Yeah, you know, just the call athletes. them dudes. They're athletes. No, yeah. Um, yeah. no, Mike will make any fighting game just not even fun. Like, yeah, I know. like, dude, like, how are I, I'll I'll I think the only game I've ever been competitive at with him, and not for long now. You know, I mean, like after yeah. a while, it's like no, I'm sure he's just would just make it a non thing. It's like was Tekken, but um. Oh fuck! E even then, like after a while, like I can't, I can't even play Street Fighter with him at all. Like it's, yeah. it's a non-starter type of situation, and it's one of those things too where it's like he will beat your ass so bad that you'll just be like, yeah. dude, how is this even fun for you? It's like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think you probably, he probably actually got a lot of entertainment out of that night playing you that yeah. night because I don't think yeah. many people will endure that. Most people will be, yeah. oh, you're that good? Okay, I'm just not even going to fucking go I don't, with you. So. Well, there, you know, there was a couple of bolsitas involved <laughs> with that. <laughs> so I, got, I had all night. You and, know, this and, podcast is live to the world, right? Like, we just, yeah. we post this on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, you weren't there, you know that? Yeah, no, I mean, it's cool. He didn't have anything to do. He was a good guy. We are both being good boys to our gals at the time, you know? Mm -hmm. I distinctly remember talking about that. So. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think that's hilarious. I, I also think it's <laughs> like a little bit serendipitous to that. Like you and Mike actually probably have interactions that predate mine and Mike's friendship. Yeah. Uh, we used to play by, um, for sure. Against each other. And uh -huh. stuff, yeah. yeah. That's, that's cool funny. Guy. Really cool guy. <clears throat> I work like his dad works in um, like the similar, um, I guess you could like industry industry. We, do. we like, exchange customers and stuff and yeah i interact with this dad that's a good guy <laughs> yeah uh one of these days is so not going to happen but it would be yeah. really really tremendous if we can get all three of our dads to do a podcast oh my dad would never <laughs> my dad would call me a well i won't <laughs> mention that you like you said it's live but my dad would have some colorful language uh, my, for that idea yeah i remember this guy came to the shop and I, I don't, I'm not going to say his name um, or whatever, but like he has a podcast or whatever. And he was trying to like, advert, he's like, I'll advertise your podcast and blah, 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 blah. And like, uh, he just like was looking at this kid, like, what the fuck is this dude? <laughs> and then like, I didn't, and like, I think we had done it like two or three times, like ours at the time. And he's like, well, I'm just not going to use the language he used, but he's like, what is this, you know, what is this guy <laughs> talking about? He's like, before you do that shit, like, I was just like, oh, like, yeah, just like, wild, you know? Yeah. Like, I literally had a, I, like, literally had to turn off, like, a podcast I was listening to to, so, to like, hear what my dad had to say about it. <laughs> My dad would never come on here, dude. No, my mine absolutely wouldn't either. Mine, my my dad wouldn't even understand what a podcast is. Uh, he would not yeah. be convinced that it was going to be live anywhere. On uh, yeah. you know, though, it's funny if my my dad does actually watch a lot of YouTube. 
Um, Does he? Yeah. YouTube's cool. Though. Yeah. And I kind of wonder, like, if I if I put, like, you know, a fight plug podcast kind of, like, in, in his, his algorithm, algorithm, like, a search yeah, history, yeah, and it yeah. starts popping up, if he would recognize that it's his son. Your voice? Like, yeah. I mean, he wouldn't He wouldn't listen to it very long, What, do you, what does he watch on there? Uh, he watches a lot of, like, uh, crafting videos. Like, okay. uh, yeah, cool. right now he's deep into like, uh, raising chickens. Like he's, oh, sick. You know, yeah. So yeah, like, that's he, like real shit. Yeah. yeah like, like he built a, a chicken coop recently and, and so yeah. he's got a bunch of chickens. So like his algorithm is all like keeping fucking chickens and stuff like that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. I just thought it would be funny because I also think like looking yeah. at Mike's dad, your dad, and my dad, yeah. uh, we also, it's also one of those deals, uh, you know, the fruit not falling far from the tree. Like we, yeah, you can put sure. them together and it, it look like us, but aged. Yeah. Like, yeah, and, it's yeah just, a certain way. It's that mine's like very sawed off. Like everyone looks at me and looks at him and they're just like, what the hell? I, Cause I'm like a half a foot bigger than my dad. <laughs> so he's, everybody's just like, what the hell? Same here. I think Mike's the only one who's not taller than his dad, but I don't know if he's yeah. necessarily like, they're probably around the same height. Around the same height. Yeah. yeah. Solid dudes. I think buddy would definitely carry that episode though. Yeah. 100%. Funny. Like he could probably do it all on his yeah. own. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. He's funny as hell. All right, so let's recap a little bit. <laughs> let's go backwards. Just giving everybody a, like a little, you know, people have been clamoring for that personal touch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Brandon had a little issue with the old white girl back in the days, and uh, our dads are pretty cool guys. <laughs> there you go. UFC 289, Nunes versus Aldana. Went down this past weekend uh, from the Rogers Arena in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, it was the first yeah. time they've been to Canada since, I believe, 2019, since before the pandemic. Um, and I, I don't think we really, really touched on that when we were doing our breakdown, but it really didn't have any kind of impact we, on the viewing I think we experience. About the like uh, feature fight had the Canadians in there. But they, I, they, the Canadians true. went wild. This, it was a perfect sweep, this, right? For the Canadians, they all won, I think. I believe, I believe so. Yeah. yeah, and then even um, Charles like knocked off his his Canadian um, cold streak. So mm -hmm. it was just oh, the vibes were immaculate over there. <laughs> the vibes were immaculate indeed. Uh, let's see. What was I going to say about this card? Okay, well, let's touch on... Uh, this is for the WMMA episode, but... Um, let's we'll still give some acknowledgement on it here because it's a pretty big retirement as far as, you know, yeah. WMMA. We're, we're losing a double champion. Yeah. And in most my other... My favorite WMMA. Fighter? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah my yeah. favorite WMMA fighter of all time ever. You gave your prediction on the previous episode. You knocked it out yeah. of the park. You said you will hear no no lioness slander. Um, and, and she lived up. Uh, yeah, and we, we're, we're seeing a scenario that we've only seen once before where we are seeing uh, a retirement happen and that meaning or translating to two titles becoming vacant. Uh, the only Crazy. time we ever saw that was with Henry Cejudo when he mm -hmm. retired and vacated the flyweight and the bantamweight titles. Uh, in this case, it is the women's bantamweight and flyweight. Oh, excuse me. When women's bantamweight and featherweight titles. Featherweight's not a real division. That's going away. Um, right. Dana. Is that for sure? He said that, right? He, like, he, 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 he all but confirmed it. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, the, the media member asked him about it and said, you know, if, is it something, a possibility that that division might go away? <laughs> And Dana's response was just probably yes. So I mean, I think we could take that at <laughs> yeah. face value. Um, and I want to, I want, I do want to say one thing because I have heard. And sorry to, because uh, I just don't want to get too far because I don't want to. You guys are going to do such a good job with this, but um, I just like a lot of people in the comment sections or um, a lot of guys, content creators or you know, some of the like guys are trying to be edgy about it. They're like, oh. A man like a man who can't groom talent and sign the talent and get them to fight her and do she can't do anything more than what she does and so like everyone like is really displaying or 
a downing or downing putting a damper on what her accomplishments are especially recently with the way it is it's like dude she can't she can't train these girls to fight her Mm -hmm. she's taking care of that shit on her own you know it's not her it's not her she would fight anyone that that they put in front of her i mean she she never ducked anybody she beat the shit out of everybody yeah i mean literally everybody so yeah she answered every call And, and to your your point about like her fighting yeah, everybody they put in front of her well, and and as far as like kind of reading into some of the the comments that people make that we you know we see whether online or on you know, twitter instagram and stuff i see that a lot too and even from people who seemingly are WMMA fans, but very You're critical right. of the featherweight division. And I mean, no shade. I'm very critical of the featherweight division. Also, I, I right, came right. out and straight up said, just get rid of it. Um, yeah. But to the people who insist that, oh, like the UFC's not trying, they need to sign more girls. I always, I always want to be like, name them. Tell me who should they yeah. sign? Like, where are they? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Where are these yeah, guys? And it's it's point. the same criticism yeah. I have of, of of people who say like uh, you know, who who who, who rag on the, the divisions, uh, women's divisions, and other organizations and stuff. Oh, they're not signing. It's the same story, or the idea right. that like um, you know, I mean, nobody cares now about the potential for a women's one hundred and fifty five pound division. But when they were talking about like, oh, they need to sign. Uh, Kayla Harrison doesn't have anyone to fight, but if they, she went to the UFC and it's like, okay, if they signed people for that division, where do you think they're going to come from? The same pool of right. fighters that outside of the, yeah, it's anyways, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to yeah, get too far no. into the weeds about right. that, but um, <laughs> uh, I definitely struck a nerve with the boy here. I'm sorry that like, but that's, you know, it's just, you know, it frustrated me a little bit. Cause like for sure. And you, you were always very like, and rightly so, correct in your criticisms of that weight class the handling of it the ufc did i just didn't want it to like mix and you never did so i'm not saying you but you never put it like in amanda's court where like it's on her to do anything about it yeah so but i i felt like a lot of people did at yeah. least from what I saw, maybe and maybe I was looking at it because I'm just the type like don't ever say anything, <laughs> you know. So I'm always like, what did they say about her? So yeah, you know. and and even with uh, you know what she had to work with, I mean, in her weight divisions, she beat every other former champion that there ever was in, in you know in the UFC. Yeah. She beat Ronda. Yeah. She beat Tate. Yeah. She beat Holly. Um, she beat Valentina Shevchenko before Shevchenko was a flyweight <laughs> that's champion. A, that's crazy. Uh, you know, she went they up. They always say, like, explain it, like, NBA style. Like, that would be, like, she beat Jordan, she beat Larry Bird, she beat Matt yeah. Johnson, <laughs> yeah, and she beat much. Kobe. Like, you know what I mean? And LeBron was, like, a joke to her. Kind of yeah. like if you were to explain it in – NBA terms. Yeah. You know what I'm and uh if we didn't and then we didn't even mention Cyborg. You know, she's the only right. person oh, hey, oh, hey, knocked, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not just beat her, knocked her out. She like ended her career. Like that like career was basically over for all intents and purposes. Yeah, at that point, as far as like a mainstream like UFC run, yeah, yeah, uh, Jermaine Durand, yeah, it, it goes on. Um, yeah, the most decorated female fighter that we've we've ever seen in the sport. A lot of people don't think that will ever see anybody um, rack up that kind of a win streak ever again. Or, well, I don't know about the win streak necessarily, but as far as title defenses, as well as uh, double champion uh, win streaks, you know, defending both belts. And uh, I think that there's validity to that. I I think that, you know, the way that the UFC operates now. Yeah, Yeah. she's like Will Chamberlain, how it's like no one was like her at the time, or no one was like him at the time he was playing. And then there's going to be Michael Jordans and Kobe's and LeBron's, mm-hmm. and they're always going to be get compared, but it's like completely different. Yeah, and um, yeah, man. Uh, how how could Aldana not get it done, man? So many people were picking Aldana. There yeah. was so many people <laughs> riding for Aldana. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was rooting for her too. You know, I mean, shit. Yeah. Uh, she's the Mexican. I want. I, I yeah. Mexicans are surging right now, and I, I wanted to see them get yeah. their. You know. To do three and a half titles, um, didn't get it done. Didn't get anywhere fucking close to getting that it done. That was not fun to watch, yeah. dude. But um, it was crazy. The end of that, where just no one was there. Mm-mm. Yeah, but uh, Mike and I will will break that one down further sure. in tomorrow's episode of the WMMA Fight Plug. 
Uh, and we'll all we'll, we'll get into all the weeds about Nunez versus Aldana and the other WMMA fights that took place on this card. But for the purpose of this episode, and for most people, this co-main event yeah. <laughs> between right. Chucky Olives and Benil wow. Dariush. This was everybody's, uh, most people's main mm-hmm. event. This is the one that uh, people paid the price of admission for to see uh, one of these guys get their hand raised and be the next lightweight contender. The previous episode, I named it or I titled it uh, The Lightweight Contender Will Have a Name, I think. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I was kind of like playing at the idea that uh, should Benil Dariush win this fight, uh, I wouldn't have a whole lot of faith that it would 100% translate into a title shot for him as much as it should. Um, right. It just, I, I had a feeling it wouldn't be a guaranteed thing. We'll never know because poor old boy is going to the back of the line, man. There, <sighs> Dariush uh, <sighs> insisted that he's fine and he'll be back. Doesn't say much. Not a, he's a man of few words um, promotionally as well. Um, and I, 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 believe that i have faith that he'll he'll come back and he intends to keep fighting and they can't just pretend that he's somehow knocked out of the top 15 or something like that so hey look at gaichi he's gonna yeah he's gonna be around um i just think it's gonna be a little bit tougher for the ufc to justify just not putting him in there with other top five guys um, yeah. I'm really, honestly, more than anything, I'm just curious to see what they do with him and who they match him up against. He's going to fight Armin, so you can. <laughs> in, in November. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be, think about it. So, uh, I was thinking, well, I'm saying think about it. I've thought about it. Mm-hmm. So, I like, um, let's take a look at it. So, him. Well, you don't soon. think he might fight Joaquim Silva? No, <laughs> uh, no. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, all right, let's look it up here. So he's gonna need some time. That was man, it, they they did that like back to back of because they used to do this with Tony Ferguson, like what they look like after. Mm. Like he had uh, Oliver's had these guys fucking laid the fuck out on the mat. Yeah. And the craziest lineup of guys. But um what the I would like to see like a um we just saw Danny Gay, right? Yeah. So Danny Gay and like a Sadiqi <laughs> Seth and Sarukin and uh, Benil headlining a fight night. That'd be in great. November. That'd be really, there you really go, good. Guys. Dude, there you go. You're welcome. I sign off on that. That's such a good fight night, uh main and co main. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Dar- Darius is is really gonna have to work for it. But I mean, in all fairness, you know, we can we can play the violins for him all we want and be like, oh, poor, no. poor bastard's yeah. gonna have to fight Armon. But hey, you beat Armon, <laughs> you are undeniably right back in it. Right yeah, back and Gaethje in it. did it with Fazeev. Yeah. Gaethje had to do it because they're not gonna put Fazeev and Armon against each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I doubt that they would put. I think not to. Fazeev is coming off a loss. He, he not to a few months ago, so he's probably going to want to get on a little sooner than what Darius is going to on the schedule that Darius is going to be on. Mm-hmm. Depending on how this fight goes uh, this weekend coming up, which I, I think we're both kind of nodding in agreement, like gentlemen's agreement, <laughs> that is probably going to go the way we think it is. Yeah. Um, uh, so why not? I mean, absolutely, why not? And he mentioned that he, I mean, he fought Gamera. He said that he's like, I'm gonna have to fight these guys. So oh, yeah. if he can beat Surkin in a five round fight, then he's right back in it. Because there's no shame in losing to Charles Oliveira, dude. There's, fi- I mean, in all fairness, a lot better fighters have lost to him and have yeah. come back. So yeah. <laughs> it's like not a, not a tough thing. Yeah, the the body of work that Charles Oliveira is is put together. It's um. It's it's almost uh, a badge of honor to to kind of be like yeah. on that guy's shelf. Um, if Dariush ends up having to fight Armon and beats Armon, and then let's say <laughs> a little down the road, he fights Fazeev and beats Fazeev, he will beat the three guys who I had pegged to like take over the fucking lightweight division. Yeah. And if he ends up being like That's the lot. the one guy who has yeah. you know all three all of those guys' names in his ledger it's- and in green. It's like, yeah. dude, I have to, I have to acknowledge Dariush. If that happens, is if I would have to acknowledge him as like 
a fucking a world beater lightweight when I, we already know that he is we know he's great but you know yeah uh a lot of people With give him a this, whole though, he's had some bad looks now uh-huh. i mean you put this he's he's been face down for some pretty rough in a pretty rough way yeah so Let's get in. Let's get into the actual fight and and how sure. it went. Um, Charles Oliveira in in Charles Oliveira fashion gets it done in one man. It doesn't even see a yeah. second round. Late into the first half, four Didn't minutes take and a lot of damage. He usually gets pieced up. Yeah, so he usually gets buddy. gets dropped. Um, but four four minutes and ten seconds is all it takes for uh, Charles to to get Benny Darius out of there. I will say, uh, you know, we were completely wrong on our prediction. We both picked Absolutely. I'm Darius. always wrong. Yeah. There's a good 45 minutes of um, recorded audio <laughs> and some video of me just looking dead into the fucking camera, as fucking confident as can be, saying he's going to lose. And I think that I'm going to flip it and cope by saying it's me not being a fanboy. Because I, I know I, if anyone's listened to this, I know you, we're both – very much fans of Charles Oliveira. We both wanted him to win. Yeah. But it's just so hard. The way he fights is so hard, <laughs> hard to see. And then when I did fanboy out, I lost a bet that I'm never going to um, fulfill, which is wear some fucking hat and shave my beard. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's never going to happen. The one time I fanboy out uh-huh. and I like get all into it is when, I, you know, and I'm trying to be objective because like this is still like, this isn't exactly fucking MMA hour or whatever you want to say is like the the standard for this type of. Um, it's usually of, it's usually the MMA hour in twenty five to thirty minutes. Yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. Like trying to be objective and not be too much of a fan. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't think I was the. I don't think I was the. One. I mean, Vegas even had Darius as the favorite, right? So. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, uh, Charles Charles was was definitely the underdog, and um, yeah. I think we both understood why. Uh, you know, Benil yeah. Dariush has, he, I mean, he doesn't have youth on his side necessarily. He's one year older, but um, I think he he's shown that he's a little bit more consistent in all areas of the game. Where uh, and I don't even know if consistent's the right word because. Oliveira is consistent in both the ways that you know that he's great and some of the ways that he's bad. He's consistent in that he tends yeah. to get touched up a bit and he tends to get knocked yeah. down. He's also consistent in throwing that violence right back, shoot a box style. Um, mm-hmm. But but Benny Darius, I will say one one area that we were right is that uh, Benny could hang on the ground. Um, oh yeah, yeah. He he took Charles down and and Charles took him down and you know they spent time there and and it was not this like oh my god he needs to survive this position now or Charles home. <laughs> no not at all I, that yeah. that played out very much the way we were expecting yeah. it to I think what we we didn't anticipate was that Charles Oliveira's length his speed and power mm-hmm. in the stand up um, were were just gonna we're just gonna he was just gonna swarm all over Daniel Darius He's a fucking and closer he did He's just a that closer. yeah. Like, it's in those in those weird moments where it gets overwhelming for people. Uh, I'm sure fighters better than Charles Oliveira have had a harder time ending fights. I we've seen it like, um, you know, like a Tyron Woodley was never really like that. Like champs, you know that they had a guy hurt. Mm-hmm. Woodley would fucking throw that overhand right. The guy would be hurt, and he would just kind of like not. Like just jump on his ass, dude. You still want to yell? At you don't have to say shit because he's already three moves into putting this guy out, and it was such a gorgeous freaking close. Just like every part of it, the way he like kind of rolled and kept position on top and mm-hmm. transitioned while Benny was trying to roll out of shit, and he kept his base on top of him. Yeah. That was beautiful. It was just so pretty. It really went to shit when Dariush caught that kick behind the ear, mm-hmm. and he's. Uh, but I guess it's, I mean, you just got kicked by Charles Oliveira in the, behind the ear. So you're probably not in the right head, but he tried to do the head movement, hands down, trying to like back away from the punch. Whereas like, dude, just put your hands up, cover up and try to clinch this motherfucker. Yeah. Because like, why are you, you're not, he tried to turn into fucking 
Prince Nassim Hamed out of nowhere, dude. <laughs> it's like that's not gonna work, dude. Yeah, the 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 strikes, the punches, the kicks—they're coming from everywhere. When Charles yeah. Oliveira has you hurt, and uh, when you've already had your clock cleaned, I mean, try and make yeah. those reads. It's it's almost impossible. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we, I think we're we're both in awe of the the continued uh, like the renaissance of shoot to box living on through mm-hmm. through Charles Oliveira, and that is one thing that they are classically known for is just yeah. the, the killer instinct is just swarming when they have they have an opponent for uh, hurt, and I don't think anybody in the game today uh, exemplifies that quite yeah. like Charles Anderson Oliveira does. To, Anderson used to do it. Mm-hmm. Anderson had, and I think that we. We we kind of like blew it on that mini storyline of uh, Javier Cordero training Benny against Charles. We did. You're right. Yeah, and, yeah. and during and during the weigh-ins, uh, Charles Oliveira, um, he he acknowledged him there and 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 kind of embraced him and everything too. And yeah, yeah this. Um, you're right. I, I did not. I didn't actually know that. that I'm saying Benny Darius was didn't. getting trained by him. I I had seen like tapes of it, but you know, like you see guys training like traveling or helping other guys out so i didn't know that i had no idea and i guess he trains with giga chikatse right just like damn yeah he, he's on that one. training i mean i don't know who he's really training with but he's training out at king's mma um and so you know that's the home of, of rafael dos anjos um i mean i don't know how active he is anymore but fabricio verdum uh eric silva uh, Ariane Lipsky apparently. I thought she split time between ATT and wherever else. But yeah, Giga Chikadze. I'm looking at their their lineup right now. So um, yeah, man. Uh, there's there's guys there who could probably give him a little bit of an idea of what Charles Oliveira is going to bring to the table. But it wasn't enough. Um, does this, in your eyes, just solidify? I mean, I think we've already pretty much said it. But um, is there any argument to the contrary that Charles Oliveira should should get another title crack crack at the there's title? Not an, there's not an argument at all, but I think Islam is going to find a way to do it. Just that guy's demeanor, the, his the way he tr- approaches stuff. To me, the way he's seen in the media is that he's above it, above pretty much everybody. Mm-hmm. So. He's gonna. He's just gonna do what's best for him to continue to, just like those Dagestani boys. They really pad their, their, ascendant. Their, their, they choose their fights. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. He's not. So, if he does choose Charles or sign with Charles right away, it would be tell me something that's like, oh, he he legit believes he can beat the shit out of him again. So, I because I think he's gonna take a few easy defense like. I think he's gonna want Gaethje probably. Yeah, it's, I'm sure if you asked this on who he wanted or he thought he could beat easily. Yeah, beat Gaethje. Uh, yeah, on paper that's an easier fight. Um, money wise, I want to say I I feel like both of them are probably pretty equal. Um, I think right. he could definitely do good numbers with the Charles Oliveira rematch, especially with. Uh, you know uh, how he he pasted Benil Darius this past weekend, but uh, but even then, yeah, I'll still give get Justin Gaethje the edge there. You know, as far as you know, the American dollar uh, in terms of his ability to, to sell pay per views. But um, if we're looking at it in terms of of making money, Islam Makashev has has a lot of fun fights a, a ahead of him, and he should make a lot of money as as a champion getting that mm-hmm. uh, getting points. I mean. He's been in there with Alexander Volkanovsky already. I don't know if they released numbers or, or how well that that card did, um, but the the money's going to stack up for Islam Makhachev soon. So. Yeah, it was yeah. that card was it didn't do anything to hurt him for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. All right, so Charles Oliveira gets it done. Uh, let's move down the card a bit. Mike Malott, Adam Fugit. Mike Malott is. Canada's newest fucking superhero. Um, guy was not on my radar at all. You know, we kind of brushed a uh, brushed this fight off a bit when we were doing our breakdowns. We didn't even cover it. Uh, I kind of jokingly said like, "Okay, let's talk about Mike Malott and Adam Fugit." Uh, I've not <laughs> I've not seen a, uh, a single fight from either guy until till this fight. Um, but Mike Malott, he he impressed. He looked great. Closing time that like we were just talking about the way his mm-hmm. that final flurry that he threw to get to get out of there was beautiful. Absolutely, yeah. very pretty. Very strange, um, like 
on the mic afterwards, but almost like uh, the like anti Nate Landwehr. Almost or, like he spends a lot of time up yeah. uh, north of the border. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it was a he very did. Canadian kind of like delivery sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't like it. Uh, Canada isn't the greatest country in the world. Sorry, <laughs> um, wicked. Very enough. pretty, very pretty. Uh, from what I understand, I'm not gonna go there. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why we weren't there. You know. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the only there. reason I wasn't there. Right? It would have yeah. if it was anywhere else, I'd have been there. Right? But it was in Canada. Fidel like, Castro's son is the. Yeah, yeah. Um, is the prime minister or whatever they ha it is over there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mike Malott <laughs> gets it done uh, via submission in round two. I believe it was a guillotine submission, right? Yeah, some for I think it was some form of a guillotine. Um, he's training with Team Alpha Male, uh, yep. and it kind of showed. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he he looked he looked fantastic. If he if he continues his performance, I I have no idea who he should fight next. Um, like I said, this is it's tough because it's like I don't know if I, how much to apply the eye test because I don't know anything about Adam Fugit either. So right. it's like I don't know how, I don't know how to gauge <laughs> yeah. it. So I'm very very much looking forward to seeing him fight someone else who I'm a little I bit more familiar with at with, welterweight. I will definitely be keeping an eye on eye on him now. Um, just always the way it happens. He, he definitely made us or made me look stupid. So I was like, oh, they just threw some Canadian out there to. Oh yeah. And he did. He did fucking. I mean, which they did do that, but he fucking didn't shit the bed either. He did great. So. Yeah, and great on the mic too. I mean, kind of good. Yeah. We, we you know we we joked a little bit about his about right. Canadian yeah. delivery, but uh, he was he was um, he was very animated, very loud. Uh, to the crowd, addressed yeah. the crowd very well. Uh, I mean, he was in his in his backyard, so of course he did. Um, he did everything it was so shy. That Charles Charles got the craziest ovation out of anyone. That is how you know he's badass. And I I was looking at it today, like highlights and stuff. He has like tens of millions of like views and impressions on Twitter, Instagram, on every on YouTube. Like he is a fucking megastar. Charles all across the world. He, he has crazy followers on Instagram. His like the when the UFC posted uh, on Instagram and on Twitter, it's like just like the likes and the comments just rack the fuck up. Like mm -hmm. everyone loves this guy, so, and rightfully so. But I think it's and I maybe I'm projecting. I don't. I have nothing to back this up at all. But okay, <laughs> I think Charles. I think he kind of stands out a bit more than your average Brazilian fighter also. I mean, for yeah. one, just visually, he's a guy who's hard to miss and hard to forget. The man, he's got a look. <laughs> and it, goes, <laughs> yeah. it goes beyond just having, you know, bleach blonde hair. Um, and and uh, I think it, it doesn't, it still doesn't surpass, you know, his performances in the cage still. I think that's, that's still a driving force of his popularity. Yeah. I'm not going to say like he's popular because he's recognizable, but I think it's good that that's also a factor. It's not, you know, a deterrent to his fame. So yeah, yeah. man, he's, I think, yeah, you, like you said, I think he's more famous than, than I, I was ever giving him credit for. I, I, I wasn't really sure. convinced that Charles Oliveira had, had arrived promotionally, you know, but. I mean, of Poirier, Gaethje, um, any, I mean, really, any of the guys in the division. There's, I mean, even Makashev himself, because mm -hmm. Makashev isn't his own guy. He's basically he has the mystique of the country. He has the mystique of his training partner, his trainer. You know, he carries a lot of that. I mean, fucking Charles Oliveira's shadow is his own. Like, there's no like, no one thinks about, no one's thinking about. Oh, he he used to train with. Um, or like we were talking about Cordero, like mm -hmm. no one gives a fuck. No, no one gives a fuck. He comes from the same gym as uh, as Anderson Silva. Who, mm -hmm. who who gives a fuck about that? Oh, he uh, he knows all. You can name any Brazilian person. There's no one. None of them are attached to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whereas like pretty much everybody in Dagestan, or the, you know the Dagestan like mafia or whatever the fuck they they they're all kind of like that single entity, and it all kind of feeds into Islam's. You know, and not to take away from his personal, but I'm saying Charles is his own star. That Just, bright, it shines on its own. Where I mean, I feel like Islam's like the moon, where like the brightness of the sun and everything else is kind of putting it out there for him. 
Dang, we're getting into celestial bodies and shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, dog. You like that? That pin just hit nice right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that pin just went straight straight shaman now, dude. Straight shamanic uh, chats now. Yeah, no, but props, though. I, uh, I think that's a really, really good point that I hadn't really considered that, like, Charles Oliveira isn't writing off of anybody else's fame. Uh, even like, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, we bring up the whole, the shoot a box thing and stuff, but it's just because like we remember shoot a box from back in the day yeah. when it was Shogun and Art Vanderlei Star, and stuff. Yeah. And, and by yeah. 20, 2012, if you, I would never have thought that shoot a box would really be relevant again. You know, like I thought like, no, their style is dated or, or this and that, you know? So nowadays, you know, he's not getting by off of that. You know, there's not too many people that are like, Oh yes. Shoot a box is back. No, it's just about Charles. Um, and same, like, uh, I know some other fighters that train at shoot a box. I couldn't tell you exactly who Charles goes with or, or who to, to credit, you know, a lot of his success for and i think it's you kind of have to it's a blanket thing because all of the guys uh, not all of the guys but uh, a lot of the guys at his gym or his training partners cut weight with him and they have no reason to his yeah fans, they prey on him they, i remember like the last few uh, a couple of people were like dude this is bad he's gonna die they're praying mm-hmm. i was like that's part of his deal though yeah like that. Yeah. They all they all bleach their, bleach their the, hair. yeah they, it's their it's fucking sick. he has the 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 support of his entire fucking team everything behind him and kind of like Manny Pacquiao back in the day were remember that they all lived with him mm-hmm. they were all like his family they were all like good friends that he grew up with they were all like part of his team yeah and I think that's what, that's the kind of vibe I get. I think he he has a lot of their respect. Couldn't even talk about Malat for like three seconds. He just went <laughs> right back to Charles <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, Mike Malat. Dude, yeah. you're so right. I hadn't Sorry, even I didn't even realize bud. we did it. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bud. Oh, sorry about that one, bud. <laughs> <laughs> but you know who else rocked the mic really well? Charles Oliveira spoke English. We the didn't. Whole thing. We didn't Friend even. Of the podcast <laughs> uh, didn't even give like Fabiano. Yeah. Didn't yeah, had, had Fabiano Busquet yeah. working part time only. Yeah. Oh dear, Charles, Charles, <laughs> Charles, Charles. I'm about to think of a title just Man, for tar- Charles Oliveira for the boy over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, My Charles Oliveira won every we're, fight. We're awfully. We're awfully, uh, as far as like, I probably spent, like I said, there's, there's close to an hour of me just saying how the guy's going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's probably like an hour and a half of me like gushing like a fucking sent out little bitch. Dude, like, oh, did you see his feet? Or like just being weird as hell on the next the next episode like i i didn't just talk shit like the people listening to this now can't just hit like previous and go listen to what the fuck like you like, who is this fucking loser dude? yeah i mean i i've picked against charles Oliveira in his last two fights yeah. also i was right there with you uh no no i picked i picked muslim i, I muslim islam i picked charles yeah against, yeah yeah um but I don't know what this lightweight division would look like right now without Charles Oliveira. Right. Uh, and it might just sound like blowing smoke because you could say that about any fighter. And it's like, oh, what a, what a profound thing to say about a certain fight. But this man yeah. still, you know, it, it wasn't the longest title run, but he has the most impressive uh, lightweight title run. And uh, for the, the way things might have shaken out way differently without him. Yeah, I, any one of Poirier or... He's the exact opposite of Juliana Pena. Hey, Juliana, the guy was there. <laughs> Did you see how he did it after he lost? Do that before you talk shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Beat someone who's actually in the UFC. Oh, do you want to be on the WMMA fight plug tomorrow just no. for a segment? <laughs> no. Just for a segment where we, we all sh- I've trashed. I've trashed this broad to the <laughs> end of time, dude. So uh-huh. it's in the okay. yeah. I leave it to my, Mike. Is going to do it way better than I could. He's oh. going to do it way eloquent. Hey, the I doors. Can't wait for that. I'm excited for that. The, the doors open. We're gonna have a long. Le- oh, yeah. with all the, it's gonna be comparable to how much we're talking about Charles Oliveira on this episode. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, spend yeah. that much time shitting on Juliana Pena. Please, Please. <laughs> oh, thank you, dude. You're that gives me so much confidence. Like the boys are, the boys are taking care of business on the other side of that. <laughs> for sure. 
All right. Uh, Dan Ige uh, gets it done. Well, well, gets a decision, unanimous decision win over Nate Landwehr. Holy hell, that left hand was just free money all night. He was night. timing it. He was timing it so well. Yeah. Danny Gay was just a little undercooked uh, to stand with. Uh, excuse me, Nate, Nate Landwehr was just a little yeah. undercooked fuck, to though. go with Danny Gay. Durable as all hell. Yeah. Uh, Danny Gay couldn't get him out of there. And I thought... Uh, on verdict, I had Dan Ige by like round two uh, TKO, mm-hmm. and I think he had knocked him down late in both first and second round. And I'm like, shit, here it is. He's gonna fucking, he's gonna give me my points. Um, but credit to Nate Landwehr, man. He's he's game as hell. Um, he he really is. Let me. I'm gonna check his record and see how many times or if he's been finished. Because I'm not sure. Yeah, he's been he's been finished. Um, been finished twice by KO TKO once by submission. So yeah, it's not this Im- impossible task that no one's ever done. Um, but Dan Ige on the night. I mean, aside from not getting the finish, he was he was almost perfect. Um, I don't recall any moments where Nate Landwehr kind of put Dan Dan Ige in trouble. You know, we, he had a few like slip like slip overhands or he parted a few things, but nothing. He never put anything together. He didn't win a round, right? It was. No, I think the closest one he you might have come to, came to winning was the third round. Somehow, I mean, which he's is actually fine. impressive. No, he'll, he'll be, be he'll he'll be back for sure. Um, but yeah. I I think now in retrospect that I think about that because I didn't thought didn't think much about that in the moment. But the fact that he was kind of rallying and getting better, like I mean, maybe Dan Ige was coasting a bit because he had two very very was. convincing yeah. rounds. You know, he's a he's a vet. He knows. I mean, yeah, he was and Lenoir is dangerous as, as anyone. And he's been in some brawls. He's not. I mean, we. I think he was like honorable mention for the Fight Club Awards as far as like fight of the year. So mm-hmm. um, he he can really drag you out into something that Dan Ige is too much of a veteran to have to put up with. Like he shouldn't put that just to like appease guys like me and you mm-hmm. to get into a brawl. I mean, he jumped out to a lead and he ran. He was just running away to hide. Yeah, but. Props to Landry. He took some fucking shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, further down the card, a bit of a disappointing outcome in one of the fights that we were pretty stoked about. Nasser Dean yeah. Imavov and Chris Curtis. They looked great. They both, yeah. He Nasser Dean looked incredible. He looked um, and Chris Curtis didn't look awful. You know, it just it was one of those like, oh, this is just a. Chris Curtis didn't Weird. show up off tonight. Night. No, off it, night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, ends in a no contest because of an what accidental was going flash on with of that? Because I saw him saying like, I, it was funny because like, it seemed like he snitched on himself, right? He's like, I can't fucking see out of it though. Mm-hmm. And then the ref's like, well, what the, f-? it was her suck, right? It was like, well, what the, you just said you could dude, fuck this. And like, it was like, it's over. Felt, it was, I, felt like a little yeah. bit of, of ref. I think, yeah, I think it was Herzog, but in case it's not, I'll just say the ref, not really knowing if he's allowed to give more time or whose call it really what was. What's going on with that? Yeah. Seemed and like, it wasn't a Bobby Green head, but for sure. No. No, it was it was because of it was completely accidental. Yeah, yeah. I mean Bobby Green's. I mean, I guess they, he could argue <laughs> it was accidental, but kind of led with his head. Um, yeah, yeah Na- Nasser Dean was 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 looking was looking really good with his hands. His his strikes look so snappy. Like every here's a uh, confession time. I always forget that he's a training partner of Cyril Gunn until mm-hmm. it's fight time and that's all they can talk about is how he's a training partner of Cyril Gunn. Yeah. And then this was the first time that I feel like I really saw it in the cage. And obviously there's sure. styles in the stand up are com- kind of built the same comparable on, like body style is would you say like the way like their their gait just the way they kind of move. I mm-hmm. feel like their gait, their athletic gait is kind of similar to me. Yeah, and the the bladed stance was always there and everything sure. too, but uh, just something about the way Nasser Dean was delivering his punches and maybe it was, was something crispy. about yeah, maybe it was something about the way Chris Curtis was or wasn't moving. Um but sure. yeah, I really really saw the the Cyril Gone comparison in this one. Yeah, absolutely. He looked great. Um yeah. hopefully they can just rebook it and because Chris Curtis isn't that type of guy to run from, run from it or using it as an excuse. So absolutely um, not. Yeah, he had a cut. So for sure. He had a cut right on his eyelid. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, that, that's going to take a while to. Hopefully, that doesn't not. It isn't a career type 
issue where like you know the Nate Diaz type fucking scar tissue boys <laughs> where that shit just fucking busts open and starts leaking you know so yeah I hope that they have like some kind of other meth like a spray adhesive or something like that Cause, like, <laughs> how do you well, get I don't think that would be legal though would it I think you would just have to use a lot of like topical creams and stuff like outside of fighting but he spars like a motherfucker too because they can't stitch so, your eyelid can they yeah they stitch anything it's an eyelid though like yeah i don't know yeah i mean i didn't get any close they probably up use shots those, of it. those what are those they're they like dissolve right like they're a like, liquid bandage or something like a like liquid that. bandage they it's like a it's like a it's like a synthetic type it's not a threaded um uh, stitch mm -hmm. but it like just dissolves within your eye as it heals so. yeah Look at this. <laughs> two stone dudes just talking shit on the fucking podcast here. <laughs> like will sasso says but yeah, every podcast is just two guys shitting around amen sahabi look great uh, this is Sahabi's brother this is the one fight that i didn't watch oh yeah he yeah, looked awesome fucking, man uh yeah he looked great uh, shout out. Okay, um, my impressive, like I guess, underdog Ersig, fucking right. performance of the night, Ursig, dude. Man, he, I, he looks so cool. He looks so fucking. That's a great. That really sucks for Vorak though. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> that really <laughs> sucks because like he just like okay, I'll fight the guy. Yeah. Who is it? You know, that's like a like Cinderella man type fucking. That's like a movie type of like scenario, you know, mm -hmm. where the guy just kind of comes out of nowhere because he wasn't on like uh he wasn't on tough he wasn't on contender series he was just a regional guy right from what i understand he his, yeah his last fight was in a promotion called eternal mma um yeah. so yeah no contender series no, nothing um came and uh, his last fight was also in february so it's not like a super super quick turnaround but he was available he had a fight booked in may uh, against a gentleman named Clayton Carpenter, and I don't believe that that was supposed to be for you know the UFC or anything like that. Um, so yeah, man, the guy answers the call. I I You're didn't know anything him about again. him. Something tells me. <laughs> yeah, he looked great. Something tells me he, he looked, looked like, amazing. He looked he like he belonged look, in there. Yeah, yeah I, for I believe a ranked guy in his division. To yeah, the, come, look that like that. Come into the UFC and and on less than two weeks' notice, I think. Um, much less, I think about a week's notice. Uh, and Dvorak was ranked like 10th in the flyweight division and he fucking beat him, man. So yeah, super impressed by that kid. And, uh, I think we'll be seeing him sooner than later. All right, let's, <laughs> let's move on to this, uh, fight night card, UFC fight night, Vittori versus Cannoneer. We're going to give some predictions here. Um, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to try to not shit on middleweights for this main event. <laughs> yeah, don't. And uh, who do you think? Let's just give. How about okay? We've been going a while here, right? Let's not, you know. Okay. Uh, Armand, so I'll tell you, we, we've been going for in, fifty-three minutes. So, let's, kid, do you think we can do it in seven? Let's do this for the for the fight plug boys, dude. I got. I we think always talk shit about. I think we can get, oh, give more than seven minutes in for Armon and Joaquim Silva alone. Sure. We'll see. Well, absolutely. All right. No, but I'm saying we're always talking shit about how, how about this? Let's break it down, but I'm not going to bring up any like childhood stories or anything. But, like all <laughs> random, this, 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 this fucking derail us. Like you'll be in the middle of an eloquent ass point, just like we're doing right now. And I'll just completely fucking go out, come out of left field. I think that's that's kind of our one of our selling points, or at least with yeah. you, I think. Uh, I think that's, that's all I that's bring. That's all I got. That's all I it's got. A, you know, it's the old, we call that the old razzle dazzle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's old showbiz term for add sugar yeah. to. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, how? What was your approach? What did you want to do with this uh, Martin Vittori oh, versus no. Jared Cannonier main event? Did you want? I to think Jared Cannonier's going to win. Quick picks. I'm going to take him. I'm going to take Jared Cannonier here. I because I knew you weren't. I knew you were. Oh, okay. Um, right. Jared Cannon, but not. I think Jared Cannon here wins here. I think he. I think I've seen Sean Strickland a lot recently. Mm -hmm. He he probably didn't beat Strickland, but he's but he did though. Mm -hmm. And he he didn't get fucking 
the wheels knocked off him or the brakes beat the fuck off him against Sean Strickland, who's shown like he's a decent middleweight for what, whatever that means, you know, they still have to fight in that division. Mm-hmm. So um, I think Cannonier beats Vittori. I think they're both plotting dinosaur like feet in the tar type of dudes. <laughs> I just think Cannonier has the athleticism to really like get when shit gets crazy, he's going to be able to, he has that like quick twitch violence that I don't think Vittori has. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Vittori's going to be able to outpoint Jer- is going to be able to outpoint out strength Jared mm-hmm. in the way that he mm-hmm. has to, to win mm-hmm. the fight. He, cause he's not going to knock Jared out. He's not going to submit him. No, I agree. So, I, I agree on that. Yeah. Uh, and here's why you're wrong, Brandon. You're, no, no. You, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you were you were right. If if your approach was to pick Cannoneer because I wasn't going to pick him, you're a hundred percent right. <laughs> yes. I am very. You read me like a book. Uh, I can't yeah. pick. I can't pick Cannoneer here. I I sh- I don't want to. And let me hold on. Let me click on their on that main event link so I can kind of compare their ages a little bit because I think that's going to be one of the big sticking points for me. Marvin has to be a lot younger. Oh, yeah. It's a uh, 10-year age difference, 29 to 39. I think on paper, a lot of the things that you mentioned about Jared Cannonier and why he should have an edge in this fight are true. I think he yeah. has the edge in power. Um, I think that, you know, uh, if he uses it, if he gets in a, a more, uh, if he gets in a dominant position, if this goes to the ground, I think that he he has the edge there. I just think that at this state in his career, I th- what it looks like is he's being way too conservative with his energy or with his cardio because he doesn't have a lot of it left. Um, at yeah, thirty nine. Uh, very the, muscle bound yeah just super, super i mean bound. yeah we we've talked about at length you know about how he used to be a heavyweight and stuff this, this guy was fucking massive so he's completely yeah. transformed his body i don't know any version of jared cannonier other than middleweight jared cannonier like he wasn't right. on my radar while he was uh, a bigger guy um so this is the only incarnation of him that i know but just judging by his past fights um and you know and not just because we got burned by him because we foolishly picked him (laughs) against Adesanya. Um, but what I was most perplexed with was just his, just the fact that he just wouldn't throw, like he just wasn't offering any output. And if he would, if you told me that he was going to buck that trend and that Jared Cannonier was going to go in there and, and even, and even unload 30, 30 strikes around, I would say like, you know what? He's probably, he could do this then. Um, yeah, and that's those are low numbers for an average fighter. That's not a lot of strikes per round, um, and I think he's not he's not even going to reach that. And I think if he, he doesn't do that, I think it's Marvin Vittori's fight to lose. I think, but I think Vittori is just going to outwork him, outpace him. And like you said, I don't think Jared Cannonier is ever going to be in danger. I don't think he's ever going to be close to being finished. Um, at the end of the fight, I, I think that Marvin Vittori vis- visibly might be wearing more damage. Um, but and I, that I, was the whole thing about with Strickland, right? I, okay, funny thing. All week, or you know, leading up to tonight for this pod, I didn't go back and pull up the Strickland Cannoneer fight because I kept telling myself, "Well, I already watched that fight." Oh, and yeah. then and then today like re- before we yeah. got on I'm kind of like going over my notes and stuff like that and I'm finally thinking did I fucking watch that fight cuz I don't remember anything about it anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I was I positive that it. I watched it but um, I thought you did. I mean we talked about it. I mean it hasn't stopped me before. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Full uh, disclosure. Lower expectations. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, I'm going Marvin Vittori here pretty comfortably, sure. unanimous decision. Did, we, did we go decision both ways? I think it's going to be a decision, yeah. I just yeah. think I think for what what Marvin's going to do, knowing the way the UFC's judged now, seeing it too many fucking times, <laughs> I think the athleticism and the sudden suddenness of Jared's, uh, you just will bring the violence at a certain point in a fight. <laughs> that the judges pick up on. It's a little more advantageous for the way the UFC seems to be judged for him. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to do that in enough 
I do that enough to make it look like he won and not point. Maybe he, I think the, I think the strikes, the total strikes, the grappling, mm -hmm. it's all going to be pretty close, but mm -hmm. I think Mar or I don't think Marvin's going to be able to put together um, like any type of sequence to make it look like he, and I could be completely wrong, but I just don't think he's going to put together a sequence to where it looks like he, he's close at all to ending the fight. Let me, let me throw out a little a bit of info that Absolutely. I'm curious to see if this might potentially change your mind here. Um, and it's one thing sure. that I, I forgot to kind of give in my breakdown or of why I'm going um, Vittori, but uh, five round fight. It's the main event. Yeah. Um, and like you said, if, if Jared Cannonier opens up, brings that violence, maybe catches Vittori and puts him in a, in a bad situation. I believe he can, he can, Here's the thing, because that, that 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 would be predicting that we're, he's going to get him out of there. But anyways, uh, given that it's a five round fight, let me go back to Marvin Vittori's history a little bit and kind of name off, you know, go yeah. go through some of his past fights. Roman Delize, three five minute rounds goes the distance. Robert Whitaker, three five minute rounds goes the distance. He lost in that fight, but he goes the distance with him. Paulo yeah. Costa, five five-minute rounds, goes the distance, okay. full 25. Israel Adesanya, five five-minute rounds, goes the distance, yeah. full 25. Kevin Holland, five five-minute rounds, goes the distance, full 25. Jack Hermanson, five five-minute rounds, goes the distance, full 25. Marvin mm. Vittori has a ton of five-round experience, man. And, yeah, I mean, just, just full fight experience, uh, period. Um, I, I, and when I was kind of you know, shitting on, on you know, Jaron Cannonier's output and wondering if he's holding on a little bit too long because he's really trying to stretch his cardio so that he can last. Um, I wasn't even thinking about the fact that this is a five round fight. So sure. I think, you know, he has to do that in, in, we've seen him do that in three round fights in a five round fight, man. I think that's, I think we're going to see the same kind of output we saw against Adesanya. Fair. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Didn't change my mind. That didn't do anything very, for you. No, Nothing. but no, it did a lot for me, as a matter of fact. But oh. fair point. Very good point. Um, really well, like, uh, thought out. And, like, I can't, it didn't fall on deaf ears at all. Mm -hmm. But I, just, I do stand by what I what I said. But Just not enough. I, mm -hmm. I can for sure, everything that you said right now, I cannot disagree with at all. Okay. It's all right. Jared Jer Kenny wins. Jared Kenny wins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. All right, cool. So we have descending picks there. Um in the books for Marvin Vittori. You got the killer gorilla, Jared Kennedy. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. he's um, gonna he's gonna do it this time, man. Mm -hmm. Here Dude, we go. <laughs> reg reg regardless of the outcome, I just I hope that it's a performance worthy of a main event. Yeah. Uh from from either guy. Same so. dude. Good point. Yep. All right, let's get into this. My main event. Co-main event. Yeah. Brandon's main event. My main event. Should be your main yeah. event also. Lightweights. Yeah. Number eight ranked Armand Saryukian. Number eight, according to Tapology, anyways. Um, eight in the rankings, number one in my heart. <laughs> he is fighting yeah. the Brazilian Joaquim Silva, who is... I mean, I'm, why even mention his ranking on Tapology? Tapology is Tapology is fun. Huh? They don't put the L because Neto is like a Mexican name. I've always, I've had a f few friends named Neto. Mm -hmm. Same here. I didn't know his yeah. nickname was Neto until we saw right. that Grant Dawson video, actually. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, they have him in here as Neto BJJ. Yeah. And am I going to take a stab at Armand Saryukian's nickname? I always forget that this is his nickname until I see it. Uh, I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Try. You're way better at uh, pronouncing things. Alhalkala let's. Yeah, no, I'm not trying that. Yeah, that's a tough one. <clears throat> Change it. Um, yeah, no, Arman. Let's see where where do we even begin? Um, he's been a darling of this program for a while now. Uh, he's a heavy he's a heavy favorite in this fight for for every conceivable reason. On Tapology, they have him as a minus one thousand huge favorite. Our uh, boy Neto lost to Nazareth Hawk Breast. So yes, he did. Wait, that's it. And Rich Glenn and Vince Pichel. Yeah. Um, but let's let's focus <laughs> on the positive here. Let's talk yeah. about Armand. We've licked Armand's balls on this program before. Uh, we know this song. <laughs> we sing it well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Armand is just the full package. Uh, yes. I've summed it up before by like describing him as 
an elite striker with DAG level wrestling. And I'll still stand by that, but I don't know if it really paints the whole picture of how special that Armand really is because he's a guy we both have pegged for. A guy who's at least going to challenge for the title in the future. Um, I don't think we're unique in that. I think when we started this, I think we were... Mm-hmm. I, I mean, not to say like we're pioneers or whatever, like there were definitely a contingent of people a lot better at what they do than we are mm-hmm. that uh, rated him pretty high in their book. But I think now it's almost like a everyone's <laughs> kind of like, OK, this guy, w- what's going to happen? I think like him and Shavkat Rock went out, we're like in the same mm-hmm. like type. I think a lot of people have probably have Shavkat higher up. I, I, I would have Armand higher. They're different weight class, different different fighter altogether but i would say like if i had to bet money on which one had the more had more talent i would i would for sure give it to armand but that's obviously subjective i yeah i i agree i think armand has a higher ceiling um but right. maybe just not if we look at it in terms of like who's going to reach or have higher success in their specific weight division in the UFC. Yeah, as yeah. I was saying that, I was, th- I was using that. That I was like, oh shit, they kind of fight in two way different. Uh, yeah, classes. And, and it, welterweight's a beast of a division too. I can't yeah, really hate yeah. on it, you know. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I just think the path to the title is a little shorter potentially for Shavkat, especially now that Hamza uh, Shemayev left that welterweight division. Sure. Seeming, seemingly left it. Um, but yeah, I think our monster Yukian ceiling is, is limitless, man. He has power in his strikes. Um, I wouldn't categorize him as a counter striker, but he could punch in the back foot. He can close the distance. He can bring the fight to you. He can get in the pocket. Um, in doing that, he actually uses a jab and he doesn't just yes. use it as a glorified feint. Like he'll throw a double or he, and even a triple jab to set mm-hmm. up his combinations. He has good head movement. He has lateral footwork. He's durable as shit. I re I rewatched the Matt Frivola fight. Matt Frivola right. caught him a few times with some yeah. really, really heavy shots. And- Frivola just had a great fucking out a showing too, so that, that H very well. So Yeah. Uh and he didn't he didn't even wobble arm on. Um his conditioning. I think this is where we're getting into like the details that make him just a cut above. His conditioning yeah. is top tier. Um, right. I think the fight the best exemplifies it. We've talked about it before, the Gamrot fight, where we got to witness both of those boys just fucking scrambling for the entire fight. Mm-hmm. Like it was one of the most grueling fights that I've ever seen. Like I get tired watching that fight. Um yeah, neither right. guy would ever surrender position. Um if you appreciate wrestling, if you're listening to this right now, go watch that fight. And not just wrestling, but and to my next point about Armand's game, MMA wrestling cage specifically. Wrestling, absolutely. Cage wrestling. Yeah. Um it's it's a sight to behold. His chain wrestling is awesome. Um, and to double down about my point about like the MMA wrestling, like he does, like it's not just his mission to get the most dominant position and ride that out. Like like what a lot of people imagine imagine with you know collegiate wrestlers or guys kind of making the jump. Um, he's only concerned about getting a position that's good enough so that he could pound you into a fucking pile. Of right. Money. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's just so positionally fluid. And then it goes to my last point about Armand is that he's so, he's such a great transitional fighter and that like he can turn on a dime and go from striking to scrambling, to wrestling, to passing guard, to ground and pound, to scrambling again, to fucking punishing you on the breaks. Like he, I, I think that is what sets the great apart from the good is their ability to fucking, I hate to be so literal, but mix the martial arts. Yeah. And, uh, exactly. and, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, go, go ahead. If you want to ball wash arm, I can't, talk I about cannot it. do any better than that. Damn. Oh man. Uh, I mean, the only thing I can add is I'll add something that also I'll go the other way and say like, I completely agree with everything you said. And like add that, but there's also like just a straight up like delusional fanboy aspect of the way that I'm think I think when I watch it. Um, I think from one end to what can hit, what can hurt him maybe his own arrogance maybe, um, and his game plan going into it, creating a game plan, f- setting it, and following it. 
I, that's the one thing I would like to see him do. He hasn't really had to do it. I felt like if he had a more sound game plan against, he, I think he won against Gamera. I agree. I think yeah. if he had a little bit of a more of a sound and pronounced game, which in the heat of the moment, like that shit gets thrown out. Mm. So, but that that's just going to come with experience in the cage. So he needs to go out and do it. So yeah. that's the one thing I'm looking for. Um, I I, and, for, I forgot that I I was thinking about like a challenge for you before earlier when I was uh, kind of like getting my notes down for for yeah. this fight and it's it's done and you already pretty much did it but the challenge oh. was going to be okay we can talk all day about bad? how he's great yeah. but what's Armand's weakness was yeah, going to be the what, question that's what yeah. it is I think he has uh, and it's not a bad thing because you have to be. Um, and we were talking about that, or you sent me a video of Grant Dawson where he was saying, like, he kind of keeps to himself in a way. And he was side dissing, which he was trying to say, the guy's a dick and yeah. the guy's arrogant, which is what he was trying to say without saying it. <laughs> yeah, like, his, his, I think the way what he actually said was, uh, Armand doesn't really care about what's going on around him, which, yeah, <laughs> yeah sounds like a little bit of a side diss, but it's also super fucking cool. <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's. Yeah. yeah. Why should he, dude? Well, okay, so. Like do you think? Do you really think Sir Eakin's gonna be pissed if Grant Dawson says I can't train with you? I'm gonna go train with the guy that lost to Nasrat Hawkbrass. He's like, hey, have a good time over there. Dope, sick. Dope, See dude. you later, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's like the, you know what I mean? Like your coworker or whatever, and like you don't even think about him. Mm-hmm. Like, have you ever seen Mad Men? Have you ever seen that show? I've watched a couple episodes, but not so, regularly. Like, uh-huh. Oh, so I won't get into it, and it's very into it, but it's like. There's uh, John Hamm's character, right? Um, and then there's like this weird guy um, towards the end who, you know what I'm saying, right? I know. I'm just loving that this is, I'm getting the Brandon thing. Like you called it yourself earlier. Like, okay, we have seven minutes. Yeah, I want to do I'm that. talking about Mad Men. <laughs> I love it. No. It's not exactly a, child, a random childhood story, but this, I, yeah, this is what I live for. Ilk. Yeah. So <laughs> he, he goes, they're both in like they both do the same thing but not really one's very good but the other guy's just like kind of weird mm-hmm. and he you, and then he they're in the they're finally in like the elevator together and it's a meme too but they're in the elevator together and then the guy looks at him and he's like you know you have so many accomplishments and everyone loves you but i feel sorry for you mm-hmm. and then John Hamm's character goes, I don't fucking think about you at all. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm sure like into this fight, Grant Dawson's probably like, hey dude, psh, sorry, but I'm a true with this guy. <laughs> and then he kind of like looks over like, I don't give a fuck what you do. <laughs> okay. Very cool. That was always allowed, dude. Very exactly. Cool. And Grant yeah. Dawson's a fucking amazing he's a beast, lightweight. Yeah. yeah, like he's, yeah, he's not a, beast, a fucking dude. pushover yeah. at all. But Absolutely. I mean, we saw that video of, of Armand fucking riding into the sunset in his fucking sports car. Like, yeah. yeah. I, well, we're posting that this week too on Instagram. That got the Twitter. Dude, that has a lot of uh, impressions on Twitter. I don't oh. know if you keep going back. No, no, I, I, I should, yeah. tw- I should check more, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I logged in recently to check, but I didn't go yeah. that far back. Um, so I, I'm, dude, you're so consistent. Yeah. I almost want to, I mean, I don't want to give you more work, but at the same time, it would just be posting the same stuff. But yeah. I think you should probably just take over the Instagram because I haven't posted oh. anything on the Instagram in ages. So yeah. if you want, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I, okay. I would. You, I think I, I would basically turn it into. It would be a lot of the same stories I use on my personal. Though I don't know if you want to <laughs> let me go with that. So you, you can. You can. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's, I've always wanted to be able to do it because it's not private, right? Yes, I've always wanted to be able to do that on a non-private one, and see what the like what could happen. You know? I'll I w- definitely not get a zapped though. Oh, I I wasn't aware that the Twitter was private. Uh, the Twitter no, page. no, the Twitter's not private, but I'm saying like my Instagram's private. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I see what you reason, mean. You yeah, know? gotcha. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we'll do that. I would be down to do that though. Uh, let's not. Okay, let's not completely overlook Joaquin Silva here. Right? I'm going to. I will. Go. <laughs> you don't. I have. I will. I. I. Uh, I have notes. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Joaquin Silva, because I pulled up some of his fights. Uh, I know I've seen some Joaquin Silva fights, but I did kind of yeah. want to see like, I, okay, I, yeah. I don't want to be potentially have any egg on my face when Joaquin Silva fucking rocks Armand Saryuki <laughs> in yes. or something. <laughs> Just uh, naked chokes him and like stares into the <laughs> camera like all crazy. Uh, he's fast. He's powerful. Yeah. Is decent lateral movement. Is is not completely void in in the footwork category, um, and one thing that like in looking at some of his highlights um, that I really really appreciate uh, appreciate about him uh, and a few other Brazilian fighters on this card too. I think uh, our boy Hawani Barcelos is on this card yeah. also. Oh yes, he is. I don't think we're gonna get that deep unfortunately on this episode, yeah. but hope Thanks he gives us my uh, Mad Men breakdown. <laughs> I hope he gives us a lot to talk about for the recap. But um, Joaquim Silva, he doesn't neglect the body. Uh, he's primarily a headhunter, but he knows and recognizes when his opponent's guard has kind of shifted towards solely protecting the head. Uh, and when that happens, like he'll work the body consistently with kicks, knees, hooks to the body, uh, especially if his opponent is, is backed up against the cage. The dude can, the dude can be a rib roaster. Um, and not every fighter will fall for that or like give you that, those openings. Um, so I think it shows that he's at least a, a thinking fighter. He can recognize certain openings on the fly, uh, yeah. and and we can't say that for everybody. So sure. that goes in the plus category. But the cons: not enough head movement, not enough feints. I, I kind of joked around about like Armand not using a jab as like a glorified feint. Um, Neto BJJ does. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he does he, like uh, the air jab. Yeah, and like I think if if we could pull up stats, which I which I don't, I'm not going to. But if yeah. if we could just magically pull up the stats, I wouldn't be surprised if he's had plenty of rounds in his career where he's thrown more spinning attacks than jabs, right. um, and that's not good. Um, but above <laughs> all else, he's not enough defensive yeah. wrestling or scramble. Well, not durable enough. Uh, doesn't have the cardio to go with with Armand Saryukin. And and all of that is relative to his opponent here and that's Armand. Uh, yeah. you know, he those, you know, for what he has in in those areas would probably be enough for some of other fighters. They have been enough, but not for Armand. Uh Armand Saryukin. This was supposed to be Moicano, right? Wasn't it going to be Armand against Moicano? <laughs> Let me confirm, but I'm I'm pretty sure you're right. It might have been on a different card completely because I think this right. one got I think it was, yeah. moved to it. Yes, um, yeah, I got moved to this card because Josh Emmett and Ilya Tapuria was supposed to be on this card, and that got moved to, I believe, next week. Um, so yeah, uh, I think Armand Saryukian gets it done inside of two rounds. Armand um, Saryukian and Ilya Tapuria in back to back weeks. Sick! Wow, what did we do? We broke down the main and co-main event of this card. Uh, I think we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll cap it there. Uh, but we didn't even get yeah. to our boy Muslim Salikov and Nicholas Dalby. He's going to win. Salikov's going to win. Howany Barcelos and Miles Johns. We we got some boys on here who we like that we, we didn't get yeah. to, but it was just too long of a episode for that. Our good... Our boy Zalga Zuma, Zuma Gulov rocking his new bowl cut. I don't know what's going Anytime on there. Anytime after but... a Charles Oliveira in Canada card... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to really get a word in edgewise. Too too much giving love to our boy Charlie Olives. All right, man. Thanks. It's been another uh, great episode of the Fight Plug Podcast. Look forward to recapping this card with you next week. Everybody, if you're still listening, uh, please comment. Uh, let us know uh, what your picks are for this card, or um, tell us your your cork co- co- should i say it your coke stories um yeah, go right ahead go down in the, drop in the, it comments. In the comments i'd like to see which of your uh, multiple burner accounts <laughs> shares yeah. random coke story <laughs> yeah <laughs> funny story uh, like i'll, I'll, I'll fear something <laughs> uh, more importantly if uh, if you like or enjoy this program yeah. please consider liking subscribing ringing the bell so you don't miss any of our uh, future episodes And we'll see you in the next episode of The Fight Plug. Have a good night.